Let's talk about the assassination of Samuel Pate, which I'm probably not pronouncing very well because I'm not French. Um, but uh, as people may remember, uh, Samuel Pate was murdered on the 16th of October 2020 uh, after allegations that he had shown a nude picture of Mohammed in a class under the guise of it being free speech. So the Guardian reports that he had shown a class uh, of teenage pupils a caricature from the satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo during a moral and civic education class about freedom of speech, which sparked furious response from a number of parents who demanded his resignation. Uh, before presenting the caricature, he apparently invited Muslim students to leave the classroom if they wished. Afterwards, the father of a 13-year-old girl who did not leave the class posted a video on YouTube claiming that the teacher had shown a photo of, quote, a naked man claiming he was the Muslim prophet. Uh, the father called on parents to join him in collective action against the teacher whom he described as a thug. The teacher had gone to the local police station with the head of school earlier this month after a legal complaint about the lesson. He reportedly told investigators he could not understand because the daughter of the father who complained was not in the class the day he showed the cartoon. And then a Chechen refugee called Abdulak Anzarov, 18 years old, who was uh, given his residency card in March. So um, not old enough for the Chechen war. No, absolutely not. And as there's no current war, as I'm aware, going on in Chechnya, it's part of Russia. So, I mean, like... Like, unless he's gay, but, I mean, then why are you a jihadist? Yeah, exactly. He's yeah. a very confused jihadist, if that's the case. Um he, uh, he, uh, he went to the school, murdered him, chopped off his head, and posted pictures of the deed on his Twitter account before eventually being shot by the police. The refugee had gone apparently to great lengths to find Patty, if we can go to the next one, as reported by the New York Post. He had contacted the Muslim father, who wanted the teacher fired, and the father, uh, a man called Brahim Chinnia... Chininia, I, I can't pronounce it, uh, was one of 16 people being held after the gruesome murder, which sent shockwaves through the country. Uh, police sources did not say how the killer had come into contact with the father, um, but he had been messaging him at some point. Uh, the father, who was accused, uh, accused the teacher of pornography for showing the cartoon of Naked Muhammad, which again doesn't seem to have been true, and posted another video attacking the teacher in which he appeared to uh, he appeared alongside known Islamist radicals who had also been previously detained by the police. Five school children were also held on suspicion of helping Anzarov identify his victim in return for money. Uh, he was granted a 10-year Anzarov was granted a 10-year residency in France. Uh, he um he was shouting Allahu Akbar as the officers fired on him and killed him. So nothing to do with Islam then. Presumably. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you feel about the Samuel Pate murder um, up to this point? Before part, we get to the... Part and the, parcel of multiculturalism, I presume. I mean, this is just something that happens with mass immigration. I mean, part we get, and parcel, parcel of Islamo-leftism. Yeah, I mean, this is something Douglas Murray points out. You know, people argue that more immigration gives us more types of food, so we have more curries and whatnot. I mean, sure, we have a little bit more beheading in the streets, but, you know, swings and roundabouts. Part of life. Curry's Nothing we can though. do about it. I do like curry. Yeah. Is it worth Kebabs it? Kebabs are good. Um, well, yeah, is it worth it? That's the question. But uh, but anyway, the, 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 the real gut punch from this story, I mean, as if all of this wasn't bad enough as it is, but I guess you can say, well, I mean, it's kind of predictable Islamist radicalism, and so you should have seen it coming, and maybe you should have uh, not shown naked pictures of Muhammad. Well, it turns out he didn't. It turns out that that was a total lie made up by a 13-year-old girl because she had been skipping school and had been suspended from the school and didn't want her father to find out and so therefore made up this story that ended up getting Samuel Pate killed. Mattress girl. Mattress girl. But worse. Except a man died. Way worse. Not just... No, two men died. Sorry, two? Well, the, the jihadist. Oh, sorry. Well, I'm not going to cry about that. Well, no, I'm not going to cry about that either. But the point is, if one lie leads to two deaths, maybe you should think about telling the truth in future. Maybe you deserve the punishment that you would have gotten, and maybe those two people should still be alive, or maybe not the Islamist. Um, but anyway. So, uh, according to the evidence given, seen by French media, uh, she didn't see the cartoons. It was a girl in my class who showed me them. She lied because she felt trapped in a spiral because of her classmates had asked her to be a spokesperson, says her lawyer Mbeko Tubala. She, she felt like she was trapped. Her dad was going to be disappointed with her. Therefore, she had to lie about naked Muhammad. 
The girl's father had filed a legal complaint against the teacher, identified Pate. Uh, and the prosecutors are alleging that there was a direct causal link between the online incitement against Pate and his murder, which there appears to be. Uh, he had done similar lessons in free speech on, in previous uh, years and warned students that they could leave, obviously. But, um, yeah, so she had originally claimed that the teacher had... Uh, said to leave and when she objected she was suspended from the school but that's not true she was suspended the day before the class was given because she was skipping school and uh, it was leaked testimony that showed her explaining that she made the story up and so not to disappoint her father so i mean there are there are multiple points of failure here but i think the main point of failure rests with the father himself who uncritically just accepted her story he didn't do any investigation into himself he didn't speak to the school and ask her about her attendance was she in the class at that day i mean samuel pate was saying look she wasn't in the class this was something he had said she wasn't in the class so she couldn't have known but the father decides to take the daughter's side anyway presumably because he wanted to take her side because he wanted to have an outrage about muhammad the facts didn't bear it out then they don't bear it out now the father is at fault here I mean the jihadist as well, obviously. But sure. There's the, the problem. The, the, the father, Pete, yeah, of yeah. Course. Obviously, the father is to blame for the stirring up of, yes. let's say, tensions. But the fact that those tensions can exist is the fault of people who will kill for their religion. Yeah. Specific, specifically but, here being. Islam. But there are multiple layers. I mean, obviously, the the jihadist is at fault for murdering Samuel Patti. Obviously, but the the father surely knows. He was looking for a fight in France. The Muslim community has been the source of a great deal of violence. Like, look at the Charlie Hebdo shootings. I mean, there are dozens and dozens. Nice attacks. Nice, I mean, there are just dozens. There are all these church attacks that never get talked about where nuns are, you know, have their throats cut and stuff like this. There was, um, there was a concert one that was absolutely awful where they were just butchering these guys. Like, like you mean chopping, the Bath Clan? I think so, yeah, where they were chopping yep. off the genitals and stuff like this. And it was just like... I don't think that was a better clan. Well, there was one that was just really awful. But that's the problem here. There's just so many. I, yeah, there are so many. And so it's not like the father can be under the illusion that there isn't a very high tension in the Muslim community in France. Because, I mean, it's very obvious from the outside. It must be obvious from the inside. But then he's playing into that with his videos demanding Samuel Pate's resignation or, you know, things like this. Yeah. And it seems that he cooperated with the terrorist I mean, as well. The, the father here is almost certainly an Islamist. Because I, re I remember yeah. hearing, apparently, they were stirring this up within a small group of people. Mm -hmm. And then that would have been the other Islamists, let's say. And then you've got the one jihadi who then goes out and yeah. does it. Um, but they knew this was going to happen. There was no like pretense to like, oh, this will never happen, obviously. Yeah. No, this is totally, totally what you would expect to happen if a bunch of Muslim activists get together and point the finger at a person and say he did bad things about Muhammad. That's mm -hmm. what happens when that happens in France. Uh, you found some extra information about this, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, so I, I went reading the French press because I was hoping to get a response from Macron, considering yeah, yeah. how based yeah, he's yeah. been on talk, talking about Islamo-leftism. Unfortunately, he, he doesn't seem to have responded yet, or at least I couldn't find it. Yeah. But I did find one article uh, giving us more information than the English press seemed to have. So apparently three children, aged 13 and 14, were indicted for complicity in terrorist assassination mm -hmm. for being the ones who identified Samuel Paty at the scene. He said, yes, he's over there, and then he went over and killed him hmm. and then the the lady who is being charged with lying uh apparently her name's probably getting this wrong zania mm -hmm. uh, apparently they could just say this in france but in the uk she's like woman Z, which right okay she was charged with slanderous denunciation so there are at least 14 people under prosecution in response to this and good four of them being kids well i don't know what that can happen there but i mean christ on a bike like there is there are such just fundamental problems with what's going on here. It's like, I don't even know where to start. But, um, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I think the original problem here is just importing a group of people en masse and not taking into account the cultural differences. Ideological differences as well. Yes, like, but those come with the culture. You know, I guess they do. Yeah. One in two, aren't yeah. they? Because, I mean, like, you know, the, the idea of a Muslim culture means that it's an ideological culture. Mm -hmm. You know, in the same way that a Christian culture would be an ideological culture or a communist culture, etc. Um, but uh, anyway, in a separate development, uh, as reported, two university professors have also been given police protection after they were accused of Islamophobia by student protesters. And this is where we get the uh, Islamo-leftism connection. An investigation has been, been begun after the posters were put up at uh, the 
at Sciences Po University in Grenoble that read, Fascists in our lecture halls, Islamophobia kills. It's like, really? What an ironic thing to say. What? Yeah, exactly. Islamophobia kills. But fascists? What fascists? Like, point them out. Like, there are none. What you have are communists and Islamic radicals. And so it's actually communists in the lecture halls and Islamophilia kills. And, of course, they named two professors, which is marking them for death. Junior Inter Interior Minister uh, Marlene Schiappa uh, said the lives were in danger and the campaign was reminiscent of the harassment of Samuel Pate. We can't tolerate this kind of thing. Absolutely right. Very good. You know, at, le at, at least Macron has managed to flip his government on this. And so the, this, like pretty much all of Macron's cabinet seem to be like, yeah, well, Islamo-leftism is dangerous and has to be stopped. And so you get the response from places like the Middle East Eye. Islamo-leftism is just a conspiracy theory that alleges an alliance between left-wing academic circles and Islamists has taken hold in the government of President Emmanuel Macron, sparing calls for a crackdown on the spread of the supposed movement in higher education. It's like, no, it's, it's not that it's taken hold in Macron's government. Thank God, actually. Macron seems to be the bulwark against this at this point, accusing Le Pen of being too soft on Islam. <laughs> And uh, and the the problem is, of course, in higher education, where it appears to be. In Britain, at least, we can say it does actually happen within our left-wing political parties. Yeah. Like, Islam or left them is not a conspiracy. They will openly side with each other and defend each other well, people in like, times of Islamic attacks. People like Zara Sultana are a perfect example. You know, like Ash Sarkar. You know, everything yeah. she does is the defense of Islam and leftism. But, like, you know, whenever there's a terrorist attack, I mean, like we were saying about Piers Morgan, mm. the don't look back in anger crowd in response to a bunch of children being suicide bombed. Yeah. Where it was just the patheticness of like, oh, that's just happened. Now that's all moved on and say that nothing happened. Yeah. It all came from leftists. There, there are no ethical questions about the community that came out of. We're not, yeah. allowed to, we're not allowed to say it. There should be no discussion whatsoever. No. And that is just you covering for the Islamists. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what, man. If there were loads of terrorists coming out of, like, Plymouth or something, Right? And it was just like, wow, what, what is the deal with like 10 terrorist attacks in 10 years coming out of Plymouth? There's something going on in Plymouth. And if the people of Plymouth were like, well, yeah, but we're, we're just, you know, conducting rape gangs and we're indoctrinating ourselves into like some radical far right ideology. I, I think I would be justified turning around saying, look, I think Plymouth has a problem with their ethics. Where's, think, where's the place that all the English go to get drunk in Spain? Oh, um, Magaluf. Yeah. Like, let's say if Magaluf every year, instead of the problem being a bunch of drunk Englishmen fighting and mm -hmm. making a mess, instead it was rape gangs and terrorist yeah. attacks. There was there would be an ethical problem with the English and Magaluf. I mean, there probably is, but I'm getting drunk, to be honest. But, but like, I mean, that's not as bad as rape yeah, gangs and, and terrorism. Yeah, on my list of things I feel, feel the need to tackle, that's fairly low down. Uh, but yeah, like it would be fair to say look, that community has an ethical problem, but we can't say that about any of these communities in Britain or in France, really. Uh, although, at least, thank God, the French government seems to be doing something about it. But, um, but anyway, of course, uh, the, the the French academics uh, f felt personally attacked by this. Uh, sorry, not the, I haven't moved on from this one yet. Um, but uh, the higher education minister, Frédéric Vidal, announced uh, that Islamo-leftism is corrupting society in its entirety and universities are not immune. Uh, what falls under academic research and what falls under activism and opinion is something that the government, of course, needs to identify, and that's correct. Uh, that she, Vidal is the third French minister since October to denounce this. Uh, so again, like Macron's government seems to be very woke on the problem, and nearly 70% of France, French people, agree that this is a problem. Uh, one poll showed that 69% of French people say there's a problem with the ideology of Islamo-leftism in the country. Um, the poll found that the, a comfortable majority of respondents believed there was a problem with leftist groups, political parties, and personalities refusing to take hard positions against radical Islamic extremism for fear of stigmatizing Muslims as a whole. When the results are divided by political affiliation, 82% uh, of the supporters of the uh, Marine Le Pen's national rally believe the issue to be a problem, while 83% of the centre-right Republicans held the same views. Uh, and supporters of Macron's Republicans on the march uh, agreed with the proposition 80% of the time. That is good to hear. I'm also yeah. just oh, dying, hang on, hang on. No, I'm dying hang on. inside about if they did that poll in the UK. Well, who are the 20% of Le Pen voters and Macron voters who don't agree that Islamo-leftism <laughs> is a problem? There's always some percentage. Yeah, I know, but 20%? Yeah. One in five? One in five is the story of the man who's not paying attention. You know, oh, what? Oh, man, oh, these terrorist groups are bad. Why are all the communists defending them? You know, like... Well done for just waking up, I suppose. Pre presumably conservative party members with dual citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, presumably. 
And uh, so, yeah, the, the French academics are, of course, outraged that um, they resemble these remarks and they've hit back. The, the National Center for Scientific Research, uh, the research body Vidal charged with the study, has already hit back. Um, though it's agreed to carry out the investigation, it's condemned attempts to delegitimize fields of research, such as post-colonial studies. Well, let me, let me help you along. They're not valid. They're not valid and they need to go. Defund them. They are subversive poison that is trying to tear down the concept of France as a nation. That's what they're for. If you want to waste your own money own money on it, fine. But you yeah, are not yeah. going to waste government money on it. Well, even then, you could say, well, no, this is actually going to be the source of terrorism. This mm. is subversive. They're trying to destroy France. Like, how could you be like, oh, well, it's fine in the private sector. Is it fine in the private sector? I don't know. I feel like if they want to fund it, sure. But then we can also put them under strict scrutiny in the same way you do with the well, Muslim as, charities as, in France. As long as they're going to be treated in the same way as like Combat 18 or whatever, that's fine. Yes. But like, you What's know, wrong with that? <laughs> because, th because these are genuinely radical things. Uh, anyway. Mam Fatou Niang, a black academic who studies race and identity in France, condemned Vidal's proposed investigation, saying it would put those studying colonialism and racism under unfair scrutiny. No, 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 no. It's totally fair scrutiny. You deserve this for trying to destroy France, because that's what you're trying to do. And some, some French academics, who doubtless will get targets on their backs, have formed the Observatory on Decolonialism, uh, de Decolonialism and Identity Ideologies to fight back against what they view as an unhealthy focus on race, identity, and colonial history in academia. So France, once again, is way ahead of us in fighting back against all of this nonsense, and it's genuinely embarrassing how we're being upstaged by the French. If you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of The Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.